What's up everyone, it's Seja here. Welcome to another video tutorial. And uh, unfortunately, I was unable to upload a video this Monday and the, and the thing is, I'm having an issue with my microphone. Well, later I found out that this is not an issue with my microphone, but that's an issue with the Windows update released by Microsoft. Well, um, I didn't fix that problem yet, so I had to use the inbuilt microphone in my laptop which which is uh, uh you know a low quality microphone so i apologize for the bad quality for the bad video sorry bad audio quality in this video so um well anyway in this video i'll be teaching you about arrays in java i'll be t i'll be t talking about all the important things you, you need to keep in your mind in order to learn arrays in java so as usual, I'm using BlueJ Java Editor in this video. Um, now let me create a class and then let me open this. And let me delete the sample code. And now let's name the class, like let's say add a tutorial. Let's keep this T capital. And then as usual, let me uh, declare a method Teja as void and uh, well, first off, what is meant by an array? Well, an array can be defined as a three-dimensional structure created in the memory to store more than one elements of the same data type under the same declaration. Like, um, if you want to store three integer variables, I mean, if you want to store three integer values in the memory, what you do is you declare three integer uh, variables like int a, int b, and int c. And then you assign these uh, one of I mean each of these three values to these uh, to the uh, created three variables. Like uh, let's say you want to store three very three uh, values like one, two, and three in uh, the memory. So what you basically do is you say int a equal to one, and you say int b equal to int b equal to two, and you say int c equal to three. So in such a way, you basically store uh, these three values in the system memory. Well, by using an array, you can store all of these three values at once under the same declaration. I mean, you can store all these three values, all these three values separately in a single variable that is in a single array of integer data type. Well, that is the need of an array. Well, that can be said as the advantage of array in Java or even any other programming languages as well. Well, now let's see the syntax to declare an array. Well, in Java, the syntax to declare an array is a uh, data type, like int, int or character, double, whatever it may be. Well, data type, space, the array name, and then open and close braces, and then equal to the new keyword, and then the data type followed by open and closed square braces and then a semicolon, the statement terminator in Java. And also in between these open and closed square brackets, you got to mention the size of the array. I mean, the number of elements you want to store in that array. So this is one type of uh, syntax to declare an array in Java. Well, there is another syntax to declare an array that is data type space array name and then, well, sorry, data type, and then open and closed brackets, space, array name, equal to new, data type, open and closed brackets, semicolon, and as usual, uh, you got to mention the size in between these open and closed square brackets. Now, these both syntaxes are exactly the same. We just moved these open and closed square braces from here to here. But these both mean exactly the same. They are just two different ways to declare an array. You can follow any of them, but they mean exactly. Well, now let, let me create a integer data type array in Java. So let's follow the syntax. Let's follow the first syntax. That is the data type. In this case, it's int, since I want to declare a integer data type array. And then the array name, let me say ARR and then open and close square braces is equal to new int semicolon and then the size like let me say three so the size of the array is three 
Well, which means that this array ARR can store three elements of integer data type. And now let's assign the elements into this array. Now uh, to do that, you got to type in ARR and then the index number like zero firstly is equal to the value you want to assign. Uh, let me say I want to assign one and ARR of one equal to two and then ARR of uh, two equal to three. So this one, two and three are actually the values which we want to store in the memory. And this zero, one and two are the index numbers of the array. Well, you have to keep in mind that the index number starts from zero, but not from one. This is a very important point to keep in mind because you might get confused if you don't remember this point. The index number starts from zero, but not one. So now we have stored one in the zeroth index of the array. And then we have stored two in the first index of the array. And then, and then we have stored three in the second index of array. So this is how we can assign values to an array. Now let me compile this program just to show you that uh, this code is correct. So it says class compiled, no syntax errors. Well, if you want to assign the values, assign values to the array while the time of declaring the array, then there is another syntax to do it. That is, um, let me remove all this thing. Now, uh, if you want to assign values uh, while the time of declaration, then here is how you do it. So as usual, you say you mention the data type and then the array name and then open and close square braces and it equal to. And then here you got to type in uh, open flower brace and a closed flower brace and then the semicolon well inside this open and close uh, flower braces you got to type in the elements which you want to store like uh, since i have declared an integer uh, data type array let me store three values one two and three and remember that you have to separate the elements by using the comma token in java so this comma is used to separate the elements so this one, two, and three are the integer data type values which are stored in the array. So this is how you can declare, I mean, you can assign values to an array while the time of declaration. Now, one important function in this arrays is the length function. Well, we use this length function to get the length of an array. That is to get how many elements that array contains. Like uh, in here, in this code, we have declared an array ARR and then we have stored three values. So now let me declare a, another variable, another integer data type variable L. And uh, now let me say L equal to ARR, which is the name of the array dot length. So dot length is the function here and this dot, uh, dot length returns the number of elements which, which, were, which were present or which can fit in that given array. Um, so now let me print out this value of uh, L to show you how it works. So if you could see here, uh, the size of the array ARR is clearly three since it's uh, since it's containing three elements. So let me compile this program and you know the result. The result should be three. Let me uh, run this program and here we go. The result is three. And uh, let's do something else with this program. Let's, uh, you know, to understand the index numbers in Java, let's, you know, let's start a for loop here. Let me take off this statement. Let's start a for loop and let's say for int i equal to zero. And i is less than l. L here is the length of the array, that is the number of elements in the array. In this case, three, as you have saw, as you have saw earlier. So, and then let me start this for loop. And here, let me uh, give a print statement, system.out.println. Let me say ARR i plus So now let me compile this program. 
not let me run this and here we go as i've told you earlier this is how the elements get stored in this array so in the zeroth index uh, one is stored and in the first index two is stored and in the second index three is stored and yes as i have told you earlier uh, you, you have to remember that uh, the index number starts from zero now also let's see the arrays of other data types such as like let me uh, show you the string data type array let me change this type to string and as usual a string should be contained within uh, open and closed uh, double quotes so i'm gonna give an open double quote i'm gonna store a string here or let me say teja the first string the first element and then uh, as usual you have to separate each and every element by using a comma so i'm gonna uh, type in a comma and then open uh, double quote and i'm gonna say teja for loop and then uh, uh, comma again and then the third element i'm gonna say tech branch and uh, so now let me compile this program and now let me, let me see the results and yeah the results are as usual in the zeroth index teja is stored and in the first index swarup is stored and in the second index techraj is stored so it's, it is it is exactly the same to the integer data type array okay now let's change this back to the integer data type and now let's uh, change back the values to one two and three and okay now let's uh, do something else with this program with this code let's see how do you calculate the sum of the elements present in an array so as you can see here in this array i have three elements one two and three now let's calculate the sum of these three elements well uh the size does not matter the array may have any number of elements but you can easily calculate the sum you can easily perform the operations uh with the elements in an array now for instance let me show you how do you uh, follow i mean how do you calculate the sum of the elements present in an array so let me declare another integer variable like sum equal to zero outside the for loop and inside the for loop i'm removing this uh, print statement i'm gonna i'm gonna say sum equal to sum plus arr of index i so what's this code going to do well uh initially the sum value is going to be zero and uh, as usual here the i values i value runs from zero and uh the length of the array so every time this for loop is executed the sum value is going to be incremented by the element which is present at the ith index so when the i is zero the zeroth index is uh as, as you know one here so when i is one uh two gets into the control and it says one plus two three and then when i is three then uh, three comes well, sorry when i is two then three comes in control and the sum gets uh two plus one plus three that is uh six so the result is going to be six now let me print the uh, sum value and uh, using the uh, you know the print statement now let me see the result and you know the result it's going to be six because three plus two plus one equal to six and here we go the result is six okay now uh, let's see how do you import values from the user i mean how do you input the values from the user and how do you store those values into an array well to do that let me import the util package so that i can import the scanner class so i'm going to import the util package by saying import java.util dot asterisk and uh, inside this method teja i'm going to declare a a scanner object i'm going to say scanner i'm going to uh, name the object as in equal to new keyword and then scanner and within the brackets i'm going to type in system dot in and then the semicolon uh now in this for loop i'm going to remove this i'm going to remove this okay i'm going to keep that well in this for loop i'm going to type in i'm going to print out enter the enter the height value 
and the user is going to enter the ith value and I'm, here I'm going to say ARR of i equal to um, in dot next int and as usual I'm going to change this to the old syntax that is the new int I'm, I'm doing this because uh, I don't want to declare, I, I don't want to assign the values initially. Uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't want to initialize any values to this array because I want the user to, imp, uh, to enter the values and I want to store those values into the array. So I'm going to uh, take these off and I'm going to say the, you know, the old syntax that is int add equal to new int and then the size I'm mentioning is 3. Okay, so... Um, so here is how you can uh, import the values. Now let me close this. Yeah, that's it. Now let me compile it. Let me run this. And it says enter the 0th value. Let me enter 1. And then the 1th value 2. And then 2nd value 3. Now we have successfully imported the values from the user. And we are now able to store those values into the array which we have created. Okay, now let's uh, calculate the sum of the, uh, you know, values entered by the user. Now let me say sum equal to sum plus ARR of i. And now let me print out the value of sum outside this for loop. We compile it. And uh, now let me enter the 0th value like 5, sorry. Sorry, let me run it again. Five, six, one. It's going to be 12 because 5 plus 6, 11, and 11 plus 1, 12. And the result is 12. So, um, that is all. Those are all the important uh, points to remember or important points to learn in uh, arrays. So, um, that is all I want to teach you in this video tutorial and I hope or I promise you that I'll be making uh, further more videos on arrays like on the application of arrays in Java programming but for today that is all I wanted to teach you the introduction to arrays in Java so if you have any doubts regarding this video feel free to comment below in the comment section or you can even email me at anonymoushacker156 at the rate gmail.com. The email address is given in the description below. So go check the description. Hit the subscribe button for more videos. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash techcosh156. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash techcosh156. Visit my website at techcosh156.com. Thanks for watching. Cheers.